Question to Munsum. Um, so the work that you've done is, is striking and stunning, but if you were to take your approach to a different climate, a different city, uh, how would you go about it? For example, just New York, something like that. I get this, all, this question all the time. Um, I think our strategies are applicable to uh, anywhere on the planet, really. I think it's, it's the way we see things and the way we actually will have to find and engineer solutions. And I think um, when Chris, when I was doing the video earlier, asked us whether or not our integrated greenery could work in temperate zone. And I said where we started with in tropics is that we realized we have plants and trees. But I asked him the same questions, do you have plants and trees in where he lives in? He said yes. And then, yeah, sure. It's, if there are plants and trees there, you can have it in the elevated situation. Could you please describe to me uh, in terms of the buildings that you designed? And by the way, these are all wonderful buildings, meet the ground. I guess it's actually my fault for not really concentrating and showing off what happens on the ground level. But I guess um, the purpose of uh, my presentation and also this conference really is about high rise and skyscrapers and high density. So I chose to focus more on what happens uh, in the building and above. But um, believe me, the, uh, the, we don't sacrifice some public life and uh, public amenities on the ground level. In fact, what we do choose to do uh, most of, uh, very often is to try to make the buildings vertical and keep the ground um, as much as possible uh, open for other uses and particularly as a park. Um, but like in a public housing project, um, what we have at the ground level is a whole series of community spaces and retail components as well. There's a public um, food center that also has a daycare facility adjoining it. Um, there are parks, there are also uh, playgrounds. There are, it actually connects to a linear village, a linear park as well. Uh, it's a whole range of um, sort of community-centric activities on the ground level. There are some things that we know can't be replicated uh, high up for instance, super large trees that we have in the tropics. And this is one thing we have chose to try and keep the ground level free so that we can really have a very sizable and a very substantial uh, park area for the people. Um, how do you address the complexity of shared ownership in these buildings versus single family homes, for instance? Uh, it seems to me a very high level of um, cooperation required by the owners and also how do we see the end game in a hundred years when these buildings become obsolete how will the decisions be made to take down the buildings or completely change the use of the buildings um, I guess the um, I guess in Singapore um, we have a limited land lease on the projects uh, most of them are usually 99 years for residential and for commercial it's actually 60 years um, there is a um, a, a sort of management cooperation that actually all the owners will have to come together to form and actually uh, manage the buildings. And I think what we do have to do, um, and we are quite used to in Singapore, is to address such concerns really early and to address how buildings could be maintained and how buildings uh, should have longevity and, um, and sort of plan all this up front and not surprise the owners later on. So with a lot of our integrated greenery, um, and I think I like to use the word multiple ground levels, is that with all our landscaping, we don't need building management uh, units to maintain them. You actually literally just walk to the landscaping to maintain them. They are mostly horizontal, and where vertical, they can be accessed horizontally as well. So I think that the key is, is in the planning and how you actually integrate such environments into our buildings. And I actually, I just want to have a question for uh, Mr. Xu, right? Um, so in China's sort of new context, uh, this sort of the reaction against, in the, in the West we call it the reaction against the weird architecture. Uh, some of Munsum's work, say if you were a client and you just saw the rendering of that project in the beginning, you might think it's a bit odd, right? Yet it's very innovative. So in, in the new context of China, how can you uh, achieve this balance between 
this kind of rational architecture without stifling innovation. That's a, that was a difficult question to answer. We talk about applicable e economic green and aesthetic. We do not oppose architectural creation, but such creation has to be inheriting some Chinese uh, features. In our understanding or interpretation, the Chinese modern urbanization has led to some lacking of our own culture. To meet up to this challenge of uh, lacking of Chinese culture, we don't want the creation to be just stimulating your senses. We want this creation to be passing on some Chinese culture that's passing on some Chinese characteristics to be part of this creation, rather than something that just gives you a high-impact visual. The high-impact visual is not the only criteria for creation. We want it to carry some cultural elements. But we do encourage creation, innovation, because in our principle, we, talk, we used to talk, talk about aesthetic if possible, but now we only talk about aesthetic. There's no if possible. That actually giving out more space and potential for innovation, but that innovation has to be built based on the previous elements, applicable, economical, and green. So there shouldn't be innovation that is uh, boundless. It should be innovation based on the previous elements of principle. That is what China is aiming at. That is the basic uh, constraint. Uh, this is not innovation without any restrictions. It has to be come from these four elements, and these four elements has to be uh, considered as a whole. We do not talk about aesthetic if possible. We talk about aesthetic when it's applicable, green, and e economical. These sky gardens and more open spaces, does the government give more incentives through taxes or more floor area ratio or plot ratio? I remember that in the 1970s, uh, Lee Kuan Yew supposed to have been given um, tax bonus if you plant and grow a tree for five years, visible from a thoroughfare. Maybe that, uh, that still goes on. Uh, incentives or more open spaces. You quoted Lee Kuan Yew, and I will quote another saying by Lee Kuan Yew. Landscaping, greening of Singapore is one of the most cost-effective branding exercise that Singapore has actually done, that created Singapore as a garden city. Um, and I think um, Singapore is unique in the sense that we are land limited. We are not, uh, we are literally, we don't have any other land but to actually deal with what we've got. And because of that, for our city to continue to, to intensify and densify, the only way is to actually go up and be more compact and, and dense. So we do realize that um, a dense environment, a congested environment, uh, needs to be addressed. And I think uh, greening of integrated greenery is one of the approach that the government has taken. I think in one of our earliest examples that we actually um, integrated landscaping was in Newton Suites. And um, when we did that, the government actually suggested sky gardens and they did not uh, they incentivize it by making it non-GFA, but the, con con the uh, developer still has to pay for it at the end of the day. So when we did that project, we rationalized with the clients and we said that um, because we wanted to give people a sense of what it is to be living on the ground, to create such side gardens, and that we could choreograph the way you actually approach going home, walking through these gardens, they felt it was a very nice idea. But they said, we are not giving you extra money to build this. While it's exempted from GFA, you find ways to build it. So we actually chose not to build a basement car park, which at the end of the day, basement car parks is expensive and it's not sustainable. And it's actually the vanity of um, you know, the city that wants under uh, basement structures and not to see the car parks. But we created a very nice uh, above ground car park that is actually draped in green. And, um, and that project had a 100-meter vertical green wall and uh, sky gardens, small pocket gardens that were at every five floors, where people would actually walk past this as they come home. 
And I think because it works so well, um, and that the, that the private developer could actually realize such ideas, the government actually decided to make it compulsory, 100%, to actually have sky gardens in all, 100% uh, green replacement in the city. So all, today, all major projects must do 100% green replacement. And through some of our uh, imagering of such buildings, like Park Royal and Pickering, Brisbane as a city has decided that they are not a temperate zone city, but actually a subtropical city, and started to embrace uh, tropic architecture, tropical architecture again. And they have actually started to also intensify um, developers to create such uh, integrated greenery without considering as um, a gross floor area. And I was also told that in Taichung too, they are also considering doing this. So yes, um, the governments do need to incentivize a little bit, um, but at the same time, developers must, must find the res resource and the resolution to actually realize such ideas as well.